Well, hello there. Do hope you're all well. You know me, I enjoy listening to Nick Abbott on the weekend, Friday, Saturdays and Sundays, 10 will 1 on LBC. You know, Fridays and Saturdays, you know, it's a bit of a satirical six hours where he takes the rise out of, you know, those who deserve to be taking the rise out of because that's all of it for people like our Bodger and uh, our Trumpel Thin Skinned. But on Sunday, it's usually a bit of a more sensible three hours where they talk about uh, topics of the day or, or sensible topics th- from the week. In one of his hours, he uh, decided to talk about uh, the sausage wars. And to say he got a live one was an understatement. But for some of you people, you might not have heard of Robert Olds. M.A. is an author, commentator and campaigner. He's the director of the Bruges Group, a think tank based in the United Kingdom. Its inspiration was Margaret Thatcher's Bruges speech in September 1988. The Bruges Group spearheaded the intellectual battle to win a vote to leave the European Union, which I've got me is a little bit odd, considering our Margaret Thatcher, if I remember rightly, invented the single market. So you'd think there'd have been more pro-remain, don't you think? But anyway... The Bruges Group's research includes looking into alternative international relationships for the UK and a complete restructuring of Britain's relationship with other European countries. Robert Olds is also a Conservative Party politician, broadcaster, author and military historian. Now usually on a Sunday, when it comes to Nick Abbott picking a topic, what he tends to do is uh, he will uh, say what topic he's going to talk about and then he'll have a guest on for the first 15 minutes or so to talk about it and then he will get callers to ring in to have their conversation about it and let's just say this one is a belter enjoy it's a sausage war if uh, that doesn't uh, bring up uh, too many unpleasant connotations that's what i'll call it sausage wars are on boris johnson was embroiled in an extraordinary public spat with eu leaders Over the uh, Northern Ireland Protocol on Saturday, as tensions over Brexit boiled over at the G7 summit in Cornwall, sort of rained on his parade, really. Uh, The French President Emmanuel Macron, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, the uh, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, all ganged up on poor Boris, told him that the UK must implement the Brexit deal in full. Well, he did sign it. Robert Alls is the director of the Eurosceptic think tank, the Bruges Group, and joins me on the phone now. Hello, Robert. Hello, glad to be with you. Um, Thank you for being here. So, uh, what's your take on this? Well, the Northern Ireland Protocol does have something, just getting a bit technical now, called Article 16, which allows any participant, be that Great Britain, the United Kingdom, the european union to cancel the northern ireland protocol the european union actually did that when they were trying to stop exports of vaccines to northern ireland they actually for seven hours cancelled the northern ireland protocol and then backtracked now this does allow for countries if the northern ireland protocol is causing material harm causing economic problems then any country can cancel the northern ireland protocol this is actually causing grave problems for Northern Ireland. They can't get things in the shops. It's damaging their economy. Most of their export trade is to the rest of the United Kingdom, to Great Britain. That is actually the, economically the most important link that they have, more important than the border with the Republic of Ireland. So really, this Boris does need to fulfil the pledge he made when he went to Northern Ireland before he became Prime Minister and said that he would not divide the United Kingdom. He's actually allowed that to happen. He must reverse that decision for the sake of the people in Northern Ireland who are suffering and can't get things into the shops. And it's actually also endangering the peace process. It's arguably also unlawful because it actually undermines the principles of the Good Friday Agreement, which relies on the consent. Any decision regarding Northern Ireland must be taken with the consent of both communities. This certainly does not have the support of the unionist community, therefore it needs to be cancelled. It also undermines the act of union that is behind 
Northern Ireland being a part of the UK. So well, Boris does need to act. Article 16 uh, is quite, um, is, is interestingly vague and specific, isn't it? It's, it's vague in yeah. the sense of what uh, action they can take, um, but it's quite specific in that it, any action has to be um, directly directed at the specific issue that has caused the problem in the first place and you can't just flounce out of the room and say right that's it i'm leaving you have to then sit around the table and negotiate some sort of um, solution to it so when people say uh, they're going to invoke article 16 i think uh, some people have in mind that the, that the whole thing is off but it's not that at all is it it's just the start of more talking well it will always be a position where they would then come to some future agreement they will the european union is always willing to talk to the uk and the uk rightly is always willing to talk to the to the european union and discuss these matters but the eu did actually although it was only for seven hours unilaterally cancel the northern ireland protocol because of the vaccine well dispute, yes i mean it was a much more serious issue wasn't it i mean they had people well, dying who were in want of vaccines what the issue now is that um, some people in ireland are in want of a sausage well arguably the problems with the european union and their vaccine rollout is because they're too slow too bureaucratic and this was all part of the politics that was playing out there the expression of vaccine nationalism mm, but it doesn't it were. But, but excuse me though it, it um, doesn't really it doesn't really matter why why they were um, in in want of vaccines it surely matters about the vaccines themselves surely um, a much more important issue saving lives than just what's for dinner it didn't actually result because astrazeneca had a con didn't have a contract to immediately supply the European Union, so it wouldn't have made any difference. It was, it was trying to bully Britain, but of course they lost that argument because they can see that Britain's vaccine rollout programme has been a great success, and the EU's vaccination programme has been an unmitigated disaster, which is well, why they that's, are that's, still, that's, still in lockdown. That's but this pushing is actually, it a this bit. Is potentially, this is actually potentially an issue of far more serious than just getting a sausage, because people jobs are important people going into the shops and being able to buy goods that they would like to obtain which would rely on staples of of food are is actually very important yeah. but also what is also crucial in northern ireland and we forget about it because they've had a, a degree only a small degree of peace over the past 30 years but of course this is something which is endangering that because yes, there has been I, a great deal of opposition to it right. from yes. the loyalist community and it's reawakening those divisions which have been dormant for a couple yeah, of decades you're, you're right. away under the terms so absolutely Robert. to be addressed yes. so, Britain does, so it, the, it, Britain's been talking to the European okay. Union All and right. it hasn't been getting success so we're actually going to have to be firmer and to say that we are cancelling this <sighs> As of this date, mm. it's not going to happen. But, yeah, but, but it's not going to happen, though, is it? It, it? Everything that you say about it um, being a, something of a screw up is right. So it makes you wonder why Boris Johnson signed it in the first place. I think there is uh, quite an argument to be made that through Boris Johnson's statements where he denied the existence of it and the, the form filling and the bureaucracy of trading goods uh, between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, he didn't actually understand <laughs> what he had been agreed to. We know that Boris isn't a man of detail. He has right. So he has people to prostrate. he has people to do the detail work for him. Did they not understand what they were signing? They would have, but they weren't the ones who made the promises. He should have been on top of his game. He should have been more, far more attentive than he has been. He has undoubtedly dropped the ball on this issue, but it is not too late to go back and to live up to the promises that he made. And Boris Johnson is someone who wants to be regarded as someone who lives up to his word. He made a promise of getting brexit done yeah. which he did for most of the uk mm. just not all of it but he did promise I th that well i think this European idea that, that, Dominic uh, uh, i think that this idea that we've got brexit done is a bit of a fantasy really because what we've done is we've just started the talking well we've got a trade agreement with the european union in goods which is beneficial to us and the 
principles of Brexit about going into the rest of the world and trading and having a whole host of new trade agreements with countries around the globe has actually been delivered. Liz yeah. Trust. And no, the, none of which have really amounted to a hill of beans, but let's, let's not... They, um, are, they, they, are, they are worth billions. We have a trade agreement, we have a trade in place with the European Union, and we have more trade agreements with countries outside of the EU. It's been a great success. It's just the... It hasn't, why, though. I mean, we, I know that people like you want to paint it as a great success, but that, that's the opposite of, of the truth. And, and now what you're proposing is to walk away from that because of rules that we knew existed for separate countries trading with the European Union. We knew them already because we were part... We were sitting around the table when they were decided. Well, I would say that Brexit, part of Brexit is, of course, running our own vaccination program, running oh, our own can't ability. Can't possibly be going has, back to that, that again. That has been a great success. We can. But we as, will, we as you know, Robert, we could have done the exact same thing had we still been in the European you, Union. You know that every other country that would have been in the EU would have signed up to that, and even 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 people in British politics, even though Britain was outside of the European Union, was arguing we should stay within it. The Guardian newspaper warned that if we didn't, the vaccine programme would never happen. Keir Starmer, some of your listeners will, will know that he's the leader of the Labour Party, <laughs> uh, just to those who are, who are not aware so. of who, who he is. I would hope so. Uh, he, he was arguing that Britain should be part of the EU's vaccination programme. Right, if we it, would have that... It matters not one jot be... what Keir Starmer said about that or anything else. We're not being led by Keir Starmer. The principle is, is that Boris promised to get Brexit done, and in one aspect, that's been a great success. Well, he yeah, I know that people sure like you want to paint it like that, but that's not actually what has happened. It's, uh, we, are we just started the process of talking, which we're doing at the moment. And I'm sorry, but keeping, um, talk, keeping talk on carping enough, about they, they how great the vaccine uh, rollout has gone is, is a bit like Br uh, England constantly harping back uh, uh, to uh, 1966 when we won the World Cup. It it's, it's like no, the only no, success no, we've ever had. <laughs> well, why not? You know, we we remember that very fondly, and we should we should always remember that. It's oh, uh, it's, it's, been it's, a, it's hard to forget it. It, 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 it comes up in conversation virtually every other minute. Great things, and I hope that England does very well in Euro 2020, which now, of course, is taking place in 2021. And let's have the spirit of three lions cheering us on. Let's be proud of our country and and realise that we have been a great country in the past and we can be again that's oh, nothing wrong wait, with are that. you saying that we're not now at the present moment this is not a great country we can do better as long as we make our own decisions and that's why in terms of trade in terms of vaccination in terms of making our law make our own laws in terms of animal welfare and us being outside of the european union we have managed to improve animal welfare banning the live exports of sheep, for instance. This may not mean much to some people, but this is just one example, one of many, where abolishing the tampon tax, making sure that <laughs> sanitary equipment for women is actually cheaper. These are things which may not mean much to you or I, but 51% of the population actually care quite deeply about that. Well, I, 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 su I suspect that they don't, considering the, amount do, of, considering the amount of money that you're talking about was a tax on those products. It's, it's all sounding a little bit desperate, Robert, but let's agree, finally, that, uh, that the, the nation should get behind their respective football teams, and we wish them all the best. And I appreciate you joining us. Thanks, Robert. Robert Olds, the director of the Eurosceptic think tank, the Bruges Group. So what's your take on this, then, the spat at the G7 about sausages, which, of course, was about a little bit more than that. It was about our uh, um, government signing something that even uh, Robert uh, said they had got no idea what they were doing. What an extraordinary position to be in, where you have a government that is uh, negotiating something that they already told us was oven-ready, and uh, there was uh, absolutely no prospect of putting a line down the north, uh, uh, down the Irish Sea. No prime minister should ever conceive of agreeing to such a thing, said Boris Johnson, and then immediately did it. <sighs> to, to not understand that we are a, now a third country outside of the European Union. We want to be outside 
but with all the benefits of being inside. What a place to be, eh? <laughs> Told you it was a belter. Do you know what I was thinking when I was uh, listening to that? I just imagined it, say, on a Tuesday and Friday, say, we're watching Maximilian Roberts for his live stream, and just say, for instance, he covered this conversation. And I could just see every two minutes, especially when it came to the Article 16 bit, the bit, he'd stop it, he'd then pause, then you would get the long groan or sigh, and in between the sigh you get the, oh my god, <laughs> I don't know how it feels, because I'm, I'm not one for suffering folds gladly myself if I can help it, but I can imagine, you know, if you're a, a farmer and you, your business is probably going to go to the wall and let's just say your industry is going to go to the dogs when this Australian trade deal goes through, if it does. And they will say, yeah, but it'll be worth it because at least we sorted out the tampon tax. Or let's say you're a fisherman and your industry is going to be absolutely decimated and uh, your boat's hardly seen any of the sea in recent months. They'll say... It'll be worth it because now we've sorted out the transportation of live animals. Holler below. <laughs> Told you it was funny. But anyway, I shall leave the video here until the next time. I shall bid you farewell. Take care.